So the date was October 8th, 2013. I was about a third of the way into a hike that led to Lake Minotaur in Leavenworth, Washington uh, with my friend before we realized that there was a light dusting of snow on the ground. Now, we didn't expect this because it was early October, but we also weren't terribly worried um, because it was early October. Can't get any worse than that. Let's just keep going. We made it this far. So we kept going. We reached halfway, and by now, there's about a foot of snow on the ground, and we're a little bit worried. But we think it can't get any worse than this. It's early October, right? We made it this far. Let's keep going. So we keep going. And the snow gets deeper and deeper and deeper until by the time we reach the top, we've been trudging through three to four feet of snow for a couple hours. And you want to know the best part? I was so sure and so convinced that there wouldn't be any snow that I was wearing athletic shorts and a t-shirt and tennis shoes. And by the time I reached the bottom, my legs, my ankles were bloody and scraped and raw and red from the snow and ice. My feet were numb for hours afterwards, and I maybe should have gone to the hospital. And I actually, if that's not enough, to this day, I have a scar right here on my back because on the way down, I slipped and I fell and I smacked my back on a broken stick that's pointing up out of the ground. It was not a good hike for me. But I learned a very important lesson, and that is when hard times are ahead, you've got to dress right. <coughs> How many of you have been in a situation where you realize just a little bit too late that you weren't dressed right? Maybe it was something like me, you were outdoors, hiking, swimming, in a park, and you realized that it was colder than you thought it would be. Maybe you went to a wedding and you were wearing casual attire and you got there to find everybody else was in tuxes and gowns. Or maybe it was something simple, like you went shopping and you were wearing sandals and you didn't realize you'd have to park five blocks away and walk. Whatever the consequences may have been, we've all been in a situation where we realized it's a little bit too late that we weren't dressed right, and, there were, and we suffered for it. But what if I told you that sometimes we go into a situation and we're not dressed right mentally, and as a result, we come out feeling mentally cold and bloody and scratched and full of regret? If you open your Bibles with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 16, we'll see that our pastor's day has something to say about how to dress when hard work is ahead. Uh, while you're opening, I'll give you some brief background on this. Uh, this is an epistle or a letter written by Peter, uh, one of the apostles or disciples of Jesus, um, to Christians spread out all over the world, basically. And in this, uh, in the verses leading up to 13, where we're going to start reading in a minute, Peter is reminding the readers of three key things. Um, one, as believers, we are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. Two, as believers, we have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, and kept in heaven for us. And three, our souls are saved. Um, <clears throat> these are three very important foundational things to our faith. And Peter wants us to have this in our mind when we start reading verse 13, which is why he starts with the word, therefore, meaning as a result of everything that we just said, in light of those three key things, three key aspects of our faith, therefore, preparing your minds for action. Your Bible may have a note here like mine does, saying that the Greek literally says in this section, girding up the loins of your mind. This is kind of an archaic term for us, so I'll break that down a little bit. Um, back when this was written 2,000 years ago, the people wore a shirt, tunic, robe, whatever you want to call it, that went all the way down from here to their ankles. And that's fine in everyday life, but when it comes time to do some sort of strenuous activity, like when it comes time to lift a weight or to move quickly or uh, to fight, you don't want a shirt that's around your ankles because it's going to restrain you and it's going to cause problems. So they would gird their loins. That means to take up the hem, bring it up, wrap it around you and tie it up so it's up here in a nice little bundle and then you can move around freely and your legs aren't restricted. That's called girding your loins. Peter is using this as a metaphor for our minds, saying that our minds need to have our loins girded. We need to dress right. We need to dress and be ready to act because the hard work's going to come and we don't know when it will become, when it will come, so we need to be ready. He supports this by saying, and being sober minded, which can also be translated as being alert. So he's saying, be dressed properly so that you can act when you need to and be alert so that when you need to act, you'll notice and you'll be, and you'll see that it's time. He continues on to say, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Um, right here, he's giving you your goal. He's, he's saying, keep your eyes on the prize, and that will inspire you. That will give you hope. The prize is that Jesus came, he died, he rose again, and he's coming back. And you can have hope in that because one day the battles and the struggles will be over. So keep that in mind while you're doing this because it will help you. After that, he moves on to say, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. These last three verses are working together to say one main thing. Be holy. To be holy means to be set apart from. In this case, in verse 14, he actually gives us something specific to be set apart from, and that is the, the passions of our former ignorance. Be set apart from the way in which you used to live. The way that God calls us to live now that we are believers is fundamentally different from the way in which we used to live before we knew God. And that has to be visible in our lives. We have to be showing that with the way that we are living. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this is difficult. Holiness is hard. But Peter says that we can stand a chance in the fight if we are prepared. Because when hard work is ahead, you need to dress right. How many of you have seen the movie Braveheart? Most of you here. Braveheart is a movie that is about a bunch of Scottish warriors who show up for a bunch of really long, pretty BA battle scenes wearing kilts. And this, the wearing a kilt thing is actually a pretty good idea because when you've got a kilt on, you've got a lot of freedom in movement. Maybe a little bit too much freedom in movement, <laughs> but you have a lot of freedom. And so they're not restricted. So when the, en when the enemy comes at them, they're free to dip, duck, dive, and dodge and get out of the way. <laughs> As a result, um, well, think about this. How helpful do you think it would be if these brave Scottish warriors showed up for battle and this isn't historically accurate, so stick with me. If they showed up for battle in skinny jeans, yes. do you think that would be very effective? Do you think that they would last very long? Do you think that they would have had a movie made out off of them if they were dead in the first five minutes because they couldn't dodge a battle axe? Probably not. See, these guys knew that when it was time for battle, they were going to be fighting, and they knew it was coming, and they were prepared for it because they dressed right so that they could act when the time came. I think, I think that one of our biggest problems as Christians is that we show up to battle in our skinny jeans. Our shirt is down to our ankles because we're not expecting there to be a fight. So when the fight comes to us, we don't even notice until the enemy is swinging his four-foot broadsword at our head, and we can't get away because we're wearing our skinny jeans or our shirt's at our ankles, and we trip when we try to step away, and we've lost the battle before we've even had a chance to fight back. We need to be prepared. Peter says that the difference, preparation makes all the difference when the fight comes to you. If you, when hard work is coming your way, you need to be dressed right. I want to challenge you guys to <coughs> gird the loins of your mind every day. I want to challenge you to dress right and be prepared and ready to act in the battles to come. To do this, um, I want to challenge you to pray every morning on your way to work or school, wherever it is you go, I want you to pray and ask God to open your mind, open your eyes to the battles to come in the day ahead. Ask him to help you be ready. Because what Peter tells us is that, is that it's, a, it's a mindset. It's a matter of mindset. If you are ready, you can stand a chance. So make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you are prepared when the battle comes your way. <coughs> And pray the same prayer on your way home, because just like moving through a day of work with your shirt tied up in a knot can cause the knot to loosen and come apart and want to fall, in the same way, moving through a day with mental challenges and mental distractions, that can cause you to lose your mental focus and your mental readiness to act. So pray again on your way home that God will open your mind, open your eyes to the battles to come and help you be ready to fight them. <clears throat> Guys, wouldn't it be great if the next time the enemy came at us with his four-foot broadsword, we were able to duck it and fight back? Holiness is difficult. In this passage, we are called to be holy and set apart from the way in which we used to live. And it's hard to do. But Peter says, we can do it, and we can stand a chance if we are prepared. So when hard work is ahead, I want you to make sure that you're dressed right.